So we're here at the celebration of Australia Day, also farewell to Outgoing Ambassador, and I'm sitting here with two leaders of parties. And uh, my first question is what do leaders discuss when they sit casually? Is there ever such a time? If you could see the setting, they're quite relaxed. I have with me Dr. Nkosana Moyo, who uh, is the leader of APA, and I also have with me Dr. Simba Makoni, who is the leader of Mavambo Kusile Dawn. And uh, we are sitting it out in the sun, there's good jazz playing in the background. And my first question, I'll start with you, Dr. Makoni, is what is it that two leaders of opposition parties discuss casually? I think the first thing you must register is it's not two leaders of opposition parties. It's two Zimbabwean compatriots and two friends. First and foremost. Okay. So we talk about, we talk about family. We talk about life and then we agonize about our country and its people. Uh, Dr. Moyo, do you concur? I absolutely concur, but maybe let me add something else. I hope that we represent what politics should be about, contestation of ideas. It's nothing to do with being enemies. We are Zimbabweans, as uh, Dr. Makoni just said, we both love our country dearly, and in contesting ideas, we're not fighting each other, we're trying to improve how our country functions. So there should be absolutely no problem in finding us together. But when you find us together, don't also jump to the conclusion that we must necessarily agree. We are mature enough to understand that we need to listen carefully to what may be coming from the other side that we may not have thought about. Now, a common thread that ties uh, the two of you together, from my understanding, um, and many Zimbabweans, of course, is standing for what you believe in and standing against what you don't believe in. And uh, that would obviously be both of you spent time in the ruling party um, as uh, members of the cabinet um, in government and then both decided to walk away when you decided it wasn't agreeing with what you stood for. In retrospect, Dr. Makoni, um, now that is 2018 and we've seen a new leadership come in, same party but a new leadership. Do you have any hope that even if in 2018 it still is a country run by ZANU-PF, do you have any hope that this is a new wave of leadership for the party? On the basis of what we've seen in the last two months and a bit, I have no hope at all. What is coming through is the system and its attributes is stronger than the individuals in it. The system being a person or the system being the system? The system is more than one person. There was a little anecdote I'd love to share if you have the time for it. After the cabinet was announced, this conversation took place between two so-called ordinary Zimbabweans on a combi going to Highfield, Budiriro, or The one says, it's the same bus, it's the same passengers, it's the same journey, only the driver has changed. I agree entirely. Do you agree with that, Dr. Moyo, that in two months, Dr. Makoni has emphasized that he's not yet convinced that there's anything new or anything different? And that anecdote speaks to that, saying, look, a lot of people have been saying, you know, old wine, new wineskins, etc. What's your perception? I would like to, to maybe start in a slightly different place. You know, I am brought up in the private sector. And in the private sector, companies go through fortunes up and down and it is an accepted practice that when a management takes your company down you cannot expect them to be the same people who are going to turn it around you get rid of the team and get a new team who are good at turning companies around for whatever reason in this instance we seem to expect that the same team of people with the same ideology and way of thinking of doing things can take our country all the way down to the bottom and for some reason we believe that the same people will suddenly wake up and do things differently. It is highly, I will not say impossible, but it is highly improbable. There's an old saying which reinforces what Nkosana is saying. Problems are not solved by the same minds that created them. I think that's a good note to end on before I start getting into economy because the two of you would have 
mountains to say about our economy. But I would ask, just as a parting shot, of course, right now, obviously, the theme and the hot topic is Davos and our president entering um, that international community on such a high level, which has never happened for our country. Um, and my question would be, what expectations do you have of Zimbabwe? Not forget the leadership for a second and just look at the fact that Zimbabwe was represented at Davos. Don't put that person there as the president, but Zimbabwe as a country. What can we make sure we take advantage of? And these said doors that are apparently opening from the international community, the EU has already put together a pledge. So what would you say we should look forward to economically? You start me off on a subject that I feel very strongly about. I've been associated with Davos for a very long time. I'm actually one of the, the original, uh, when I was young, I was called, what was it called? Global Leaders of Tomorrow. Way, way back, I don't know, maybe 20 years ago or thereabouts. You see, one of our biggest problems in this country is that we do not understand how to use history. When you don't confront your own history honestly, it means you don't know where to start. I would not have gone to Davos. It's a waste of money, waste of time. Absolutely. I would have gone to Davos next year. You know, we need to understand why Zimbabwe is where it is. Zimbabwe is where it is because of our deeds as Zimbabweans. And that's where you start before you go trying to convince other people to come and do anything in your country. So I would have spent the first minimum six months addressing the platform which we destroyed. That's what I would have been rebuilding. Before I start, stop worrying about, I'm a banker as well. When you come to me asking for a loan, I look at how you manage your own money. That's the only place I have to judge on whether you are going to manage my money properly or not. So learn to manage your own money properly first before you come to me. Just Dr. Makoni. Fact, um, I agree with Nkosana. And it's, 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 it's going to also address going to SADC, going to other capitals before you have connected at home. ED should connect with the people here and tell the people what he's telling Zuma and Lorenko and Nusi before he goes to the outsiders. But I also want to make a small historical correction. <clears throat> Zimbabwe has been represented at Davos before. And for our sins, Nkosana and I were the last representatives of Zimbabwe at Davos in 2001. Well, they... Minister of Finance and Minister of Trade. Well, there you have it. The two gentlemen sitting here together, as I said in the beginning. It would be interesting to be a fly on the wall when the two of them are sitting alone and exchanging thoughts. Um, as you can see, there's obviously a lot of camaraderie. As you said right in the beginning, you are Zimbabweans sitting down, not necessarily enemies. And there's a lot of common um, factors between the two of you, um, but above all being Zimbabweans. So I want to thank you for your time. Sorry to disrupt your moment. I'll allow you to carry on. That's me, Ravenna.